What's up guys, welcome back to RPEG Electronics. So today I wanted to show you guys the two player pedestal I built for a very good friend of mine. He's been my mentor since I was 18 years old and first started my karaoke business. Excellent friend, uh, always taught me how to how to sell things, how to do uh, karaoke stuff. And then when he said, oh, my kids like arcades now and wanted to build a premium arcade, I said, all right, let's build a pedestal for you. And uh, I wanted to get everything really like top of the line buttons and parts for him. So this uh, box, I did not cut this myself. This is from uh, Micro Center. It's an Atari fight stick case. Uh, my local Micro Center had a crazy sale. It was $10 just for the box on the buttons and ball and everything costs a lot more. So I want to show you what I did very quickly and then I'll explain um, how I did everything. All right. So this has a nice lock key system, two hydraulic arms. Uh, if it wasn't for the ball, this would actually lift by itself, which is really cool. All right. I have inside here, I'm going to move in and zoom in for you guys. Okay, so here I have two Brook uh, Zero Pi boards, all right? These are the best in my opinion. They do X input natively. You can play all your Steam games without remapping, without keyboard inputs, nada. That's perfect, that's what I want. They also have double input, so you see the blue bar on top here? That's screw terminals, and then here you have a 20 pin uh, harness. The harness is like 15 bucks and you just plug in your buttons without any um, cutting or stripping or uh, soldering. And then the screw terminals, I actually use it for double inputs so you can make another button do the same command. So in this case, I've made, um, I'm sorry, make the same button do another command. So I've made my bottom two buttons, also my trackballs right click and left click. All right, so I have full uh, control with trackball in desktop mode, all right? Here I have a simple USB hub. I can turn off the Brook uh, boards if I wanted to and connect Xbox controllers if I wanted to play wireless. Here I have a IL Euro joysticks. These are the best sounding, best feeling classic American style joysticks. Uh, I was gonna do Japanese style for him, but he actually is uh, born in the like 80s kid. Uh, same, I'm in the 90s kid, but we play, played the same arcade and we're used to American style with the circular gate or the circle feeling gate. The buttons are Ultimark uh, goat leaf buttons. All right. These are probably the uh, best buttons you can get right now for the money. They are very expensive. I think they're like six plus dollars each. But the colors are actually the classic HAP colors. This is what you would get um, from the old like Mar Marvel versus Capcom uh, colors or the old Street Fighters because they're, they're not like super bright. The, I've seen the greens and blues where they're like almost like childish, childish colors like lime green. These are like the, the matte colors. This is what I like. And they, they have keyboard switches inside instead of micro switches. So there, there's a the travel is shorter, the the hit is more precise. So you can hit it on the edge, on the sides, and it'll still activate the button. And the, the contacts are gold plated. All right. Uh, I'm pretty sure they. I know what brand they are. They are Baolian brand uh, keyboard switches, um, but they they are very good. Uh, if they were cherry, it would be even better. But I haven't seen cherry in a micro switch like this ever. Not not without the. Um, the hap long you know clip win ones but those you need to replace the micro switch once in a while if they get rusty or whatever so we don't bother that this is an original hap trackball i found a seller who had a new old stock this is not the suzo hap one this the quality on this is insane this is like from golden tea and uh, luckily it fit perfectly in the fight stick all right i did a carbon fiber wrap to keep it nice and clean and just simple black tea molding all right and then uh, for the buttons, I just used the regular LED buttons from Amazon because uh, Ultimark does not sell buttons with the player one and player two stickers on them. And uh, I wanted just to identify, you know, which one is which. Okay. Over here, I'm gonna show you some special stuff I did for the PC. All right, I'm gonna lower my uh, tripod. Okay. So here we have a little drawer. And by the way, uh, this is also from Micro Center. It was on sale for like $23, the whole cabinet and $10 for this. You're never gonna find that again. I think they were liquidating. Inside here, I have a spare keyboard. Okay, this is just to navigate and type stuff in case he wants to use it as a regular keyboard, a uh, regular PC. Okay, I don't do um, Raspberry Pis. I don't like to do Android Box. I like to build PCs. I like to build the best of the best. I offered him, hey, if you want to do a mini PC, it'll be a lot, lot cheaper. But he said, you know what, let's go all out. And uh, his, his business, his um, his store is very premium. Like all my Japanese um, karaoke speakers come from him. So I was like, all right, if you want to go premium, I'll build you something premium. 
I did not go crazy with the aesthetics of it. Normally I would build something uh, super tiny, like a mini ITX case with a really powerful uh, CPU and real powerful uh, GPU. But because it was gonna go inside a cabinet anyway, I did this special uh, Lian Li uh, PC case with a glass cover, all right? Uh, I have a four terabyte SSD I programmed especially for him because I wanted to be able to start and exit the games with just an Xbox controller, meaning I don't need a keyboard. I don't need an escape key. I don't need five and one. I wanna start everything and stop everything with an Xbox controller, a Brook controller, or a fight stick. Because if I wanted to unplug this fight stick, I can plug in a standard fight stick that you would get from uh, Amazon, like uh, Mad Cats or whatever, and you can do it, you can play it wirelessly too. You can step away and uh, you know just plug it in. Here, I have two 24 volt power supplies, which is powering the Gunfire R that he also purchased uh, from me. All right, I have Wi-Fi 6 antenna. The speed on this is Wi-Fi 6AX. This is a Z, uh, uh, sorry, B660M motherboard. So this is 12th gen. It's upgradable to pretty much anything. I have a 12400 uh, inside here right now. And this is not the F variant, so that means if I unplug the GPU, it will still have enough power to run pretty much all of these games. All right, 700 watt power supply and an RTX 3060 GPU from Asus here, dual fan version. This is a very compact case and probably the smallest mini tower uh, I could find for, um, you know, for the price. Uh, if you were to do a mini ITX, like a really small one, it would be really expensive because the smaller the components get, the more cost you get. All right, but that's enough about that. It's overall completely overkill 16 gigs of ram like this will this will rip through 4k on my entire arcade drive uh i only put on the fun arcade stuff for him i didn't put on any like rpgs we, we don't really have time for that everyone is married and has like kids already okay and it has some nice uh, spear latches so this locks perfectly as well and this is upgradable at any time so that's what i did and i left it hard drive external in an enclosure so that if um, he wants to upgrade or I make updates for him, I just unplug and plug in a new one. That's it. I don't have to go through the hassle of ripping it all out. All right. And this is going to close neatly here. Normally on a case like this, you would press the power button on there, but I wanted to show you on my favorite feature right here is a wireless power button. So what this does is it's wirelessly connected to the power source and the power switch of the uh, CPU sorry off the pc all right i'm gonna show you my tv here okay all right yeah i'm still not a professional videographer or anything like that i just i just like to build stuff okay there we go all right so here i'm gonna show you what happens when i press this it's gonna immediately power on the pc which is connected through hdmi to the tv and boom, my TV has gotten signal. All right, it's gonna go through the BIOS and then it's gonna go straight into my big box build. And also over here, instead of plugging in Gunfire R directly to the CPU, I actually did an extension cable for him. So uh, at any time, if he wanted to, he could buy new guns, new models, and just plug them in. See? I have my drive set up to auto mapping now, so no matter how he plugs in the guns or reverses or buys new ones, they always play perfectly. Big shout out to my friend Jason Baker for that. Uh, I paid for it a lot, but he made me a utility that auto maps everything, which saved me a lot of grief. And you can see here, all right. My uh, system is now fully booted. And then let's have a look at the special keys and everything I've done to make this a very plug and play turnkey solution. So let's go up a little. All right, this is the City Hunter theme. All right, really cool. Okay, so I'm gonna go through uh, MAME very quickly. All right, so here's Arcade. I have the entire MAME collection. Okay, I got tons of light gun games here. That's what I specialize in, of course. They all have videos. Okay. All right, I have set up some special hotkeys here so that he can uh, easily navigate everything. I'm gonna show you what keys I did. Maybe you'll get some ideas for your own setup. Okay, 
So my favorite one is just press coin and up to raise the volume and down to lower the volume, okay? Then I can just pick a game, Let's pick uh, my favorite, Area 51. All right, you're gonna have this nice boot, uh, boot sequence, okay? And immediately, your guns are ready to go. So I have my red gun, all right? My red uh, time crisis gun with the full recoil. Can insert coins, start. I know my blue gun is gonna work too. All right, I got blue, uh, my crosshair right, right there. Okay. I'm not gonna go too, too deep into gameplay here because we, we've all seen this before. Oh, also one more thing, uh, when you're when you're playing these, um, don't, don't have your camera pointed to it because it, they both emit infrared and they cause some issues there. Okay. All right. So from here, I'm gonna just exit by pressing coin and the blue button. And I'm back out. All right. Okay. And the only other thing I just want to show you guys while I do this is I'm able to exit any game, any system using this key combo. So let's say I just open up uh, like Wii. It was a lot of work to get uh, every console working with this key combo exit and to remain focused on big box because sometimes when you exit without an escape key, your big box actually freezes up. It, uh, the mouse is no longer, the screen is no longer focused on big box, it's focused on a, an external app, and that causes issues. So here, I'm gonna escape this game. Okay, and look at that. I still got full focus, I can control. All right, I have pretty much uh, all the fun systems on there. He's probably not gonna play any of these console games, but uh, PS3, I really only have uh, things like Time Crisis 4, all right, because uh, this is a gun game, that's fun. Okay, I've actually made a special script to just boot it without calibration, without um, going into any of the, the BS shortcut keys. See, it just works. And coin and uh, and a blue button just exits. If you were to plug in a um, Xbox control, you can just do the same things. Back and uh, X, I know exit. And that's it. A turn, completely turnkey system. All right. Uh, playing fighting games on this is obviously like super duper fun. So like uh, he said, he loves Street Fighter, but I actually wanted to give him the more modern versions. My favorite one. will be uh, Street Fighter X Tekken. Oh, I actually have to change the resolution back because, um, yeah, he wanted it in 1080p. This is a 4K TV and it's giving me some scaling issues. You gotta change the graphics back to uh, the proper size for this game. There we go. There we are. So I just wanna show you how nicely this game plays like on a stick like this. This is very uh, arcade authentic. And of course on a 3060, this has a 3060 in there, so this is more than overkill to run this game. It's gonna give you an A score during the test, that's for sure. Yeah, see, A, no problem.
Again, normally I would have to set in 4K, but uh, he's planning to use an old spare TV because he has many of them. So, I said, all right, well then, that's that. When he upgrades, I'll reset the, the system to 4K settings for him. And you can hear like how nice this, this spring back is just so real. And then now I can exit Windows games too, because I set up an emulator for Windows games. Look how nice I, and cleanly I exited. So this way, you know, kids or whatever, they won't have any trouble playing this. It's a turnkey solution. And then when you're done, you can always go back to desktop mode just to use your, your regular desktop. And then, yeah, you got your mouse over here for the, uh, the uh, trackball. All you have to do is just to, oh, make sure you cover your guns. All right, and look, I got my trackball working perfectly as an ultra smooth mouse. And then this button over here, access to right click or left click. Boop. All right, that's it guys. I hope you enjoyed this uh, demo video. I encourage you to use Brooks products um, for your encoders, Ultimark buttons, hap trackballs. And uh, honestly, the quality of this um, cabinet was amazing. Uh, for $10, <laughs> yeah, of course. Uh, it's local pickup only at Micro Center. Most places probably won't have it anymore. My local one did, but um, yeah, other than that, you can go to um, like some other arcade builders to do it. But uh, in New York City, you just can't possibly cut wood in your apartment. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll have more videos coming up of how I did um, some special drives and things like that for my, my, my own usage. All right. Take care. Bye-bye.